So, I've made a lot of videos about modding, but they were mostly about how great everything was. This one is different. It's about the most infamous team he ever managed. It's about what happens when you get a serial winner to manage a team of players who only care about fame, ruled by men who only care about money, supported by fans who only care about short-term glory. It's the story of when modding managed a team who did not want to win. It's the classic scenario where an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. It's modding you at Manchester United. So, the first question that should be answered is why would Mourinho, one of the greatest managers of all time, want to manage Manchester United? I mean, that sounds a bit wrong, Man United are a gigantic club, but my point is that back in 2016, they were in a seriously rough spot. It had only been three years since the retirement of Sir Alex Ferguson and he had already tried to replace him three different times. The first man to get a job was David Moyes, who in just 10 months managed to destroy everything Fergie had built, landing United at 7th place with the lowest points tally in the history of the club. Then club legend Ryan Giggs took over as interim coach, only to resign after 4 matches, claiming he just couldn't deal with the pressure. Finally, they decided to bring out the big gun, signing Louis van Gaal, thinking that a guy with his resume could never fail, but instead he spent 200 million only to settle for a fourth place finish and an FA Cup trophy, which as you might imagine meant he also ended up getting sacked leaving his spot up for the taking, which is exactly when Mourinho came into the picture, because he had just been sacked for the first time in his career, only 7 months after leading Chelsea to the Premier League title. But how was that even possible, you ask? Well, first Mourinho got in trouble with the board over not getting the budget he demanded, then he clashed with one of his staff members, leading to their departure, worsening his relationship with the squad, eventually losing the dressing room, claiming that the players had betrayed his philosophy and leaving the club one point above the relegation zone. If you're wondering why I've gone so in-depth on this, well, it will sound familiar soon. But the point is, Mourinho's reputation was at an all-time low. He had flirted with the idea of joining United for a while, maintaining a great relationship with Sir Alex, and considering that United were claiming their only goal was to win, and that Mourinho was known for being able to win anywhere, at any cost, no matter how bad the squad he had available was, a lot of people saw him as the perfect man for the job. And with Guardiola, his lifelong nemesis, joining rivals Man City that same year, while many claimed Mourinho was just growing bored of the sport, now there was no chance he'd be lacking motivation. The only problem was that Guardiola was inheriting a team that had finished top 2 in 4 out of the last 5 years, with players like Aguero, De Bruyne and David Silva. Well, the most notorious players Mourinho was getting was a Wayne Rooney who was on his final year at United, a Bastian Schweinsteiger was 4 matches away from leaving to the MLS, and well, David De Gea. Even Schneiderlin managed 39 appearances that season, so yeah, not great. But still, all that meant was that it was time to get to work. So, first, there was one clear problem. The most prolific goal scorer in the squad was Martial, and even he settled for a measly 17 goals in all competitions. So, Morin pulled out his phone and called an old buddy from his Inter Milan days, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Sure, you could complain that he was 34 and therefore only a temporary solution, but man, not only was he a free agent, but he was still as hungry as ever, he worshipped Mourinho and above all, he had finished the previous season with 50 goals and 19 assists in 51 matches. He simply could not fail. The next problem was obvious and well, it was the entire backline. Darmia, Smalling and Valencia were just not good enough, Daily Blind never really settled at United and Phil Jones and Shaw, though still both promising at the time, were injury time bombs about to go off. I think Ed Moding realized just how bad those injuries would be, maybe they've signed more defenders and to be fair he did approach both Hummels and Varane, but given how stingy Ed Woodward and the rest of the board were, he was forced to settle for just Eric Bailly, which is just ironic. but. Moving on. To finish off his spending spree with a tired midfield composed of Schweinsteiger, Mata, Carrick and Fellaini, Mourinho looked to bring some hunger back into it and so, first he opted for a bit of a bargain, paying £26 million for the at the time Bundesliga Player of the Year and top assist provider, Mikitarian. Yeah. And then, finally they signed maybe the most promising young midfielder in the world, Paul Pogba, for £96 million, the most expensive signing of all time, which was especially ironic considering United had let him leave for free just four years earlier. All I have to say about that is that according to many sources, Mourinho wanted Kanté, Pogba was proposed to him by the board. Yeah, I guess they were just trying to fix their mistake, but instead they ended up just doubling down on it. I cannot even put into words the amount of drama this transfer brought to the team.
Regardless, somehow, what bothered me the most about this transfer window was that Mourinho, known for clearing out all the dead wood once he arrived at a new club, just did not do that at all, only selling three relevant players, which always left me to wonder if someone... Still, with that done, the season started and would you guess it, right on his first official match, Mourinho took his first trophy, beating Leicester to the Community Shield with a goal by Zlatan. However, in the league, things didn't go as well. By the fourth match day, he had already been beaten by Guardiola, by the eighth he was already getting suspended for criticizing the referees, that same month all three players I mentioned, Shaw, Jones and Bailly, as well as Valencia and Mkhitaryan, were all sidelined with serious injuries and by the end of the month, Mourinho was already losing it, being sent into the stands for protesting too much, as well as dropping the iconic quote, we may not have A, B, C, D, E, F and G, but we have L, M, N, SOP. <laughs> Regardless, even if United were already 8 points away from the top of the table, the cup was another story. Not only had he knocked Guardiola's Man City out of the competition, but he would go on to beat West Ham, Hull City and Southampton, taking his second trophy of the season by mid-February, already establishing this as the most successful season in the post-Ferguson era. And the funny thing is, the best was definitely still to come. You see, so far the Europa League campaign had been uninspiring, with defeats to Fenerbahce and Feyenoord struggling to even make it out of the group stage and then struggling even more from the round of 16 onwards, settling for draws in the first legs of their matches against Rostov and Anderlecht, going as far as only managing to beat the Belgians in extra time. But regardless, following a slightly more comfortable win over Celta de Vigo, suddenly United were in the final, and though back then it didn't seem as daunting, this uninspiring United side was up against an Ajax team that already contained in its roster the likes of Delete, De Young, Ziyech, Van de Beek and Neres, who were only two years away from nearly making it to the Champions League final. But well, in classic Mourinho fashion, Ajax watched as Pogba scored the opener against the flow of the match, and if after that United were already on the back foot, once Mkhitaryan scored three minutes into the second half, things got seriously shocking, with Ajax being allowed 72% of possession, as well as 11 shots in 40 minutes, only to still somehow come out of it completely scoreless. Even if United's league performance had been dreadful, getting fewer wins at Old Trafford than even relegated the whole city had managed at their own stadium, Mourinho had proven his word. He had proven that he was still a serial winner, taking three trophies in his first season, more than Moyes and Van Gaal had managed over their three seasons in charge, and made even sweeter by the fact he included their first European trophy in nine years. Regardless, even as the season came to this unexpectedly hopeful end, a lot of fans and most of the media didn't seem happy with Mourinho. He was already being labeled as some sort of villain, but according to them, his only crime had been boring football. And the only thing allowing Mourinho to rise above these critics were the trophies. As he would say, there are a lot of poets in football, but poets, they don't win much. But unfortunately for Mourinho, soon, neither would he. You see, the second season was all about the league. Mourinho was known for his second seasons, in fact he had won the league in every single one of them, but with a 6th place finish in his first, it looked impossible and the board wasn't helping. After missing out on Hummels and Varane the previous season in favor of the man of glass himself, Eric Bailly, it looked even stranger when United kicked off the season by signing Lindelof from Benfica, a player Mourinho was quick to tell the press he didn't know much about, saying the decision to sign him came from inside the club. And then came another strange situation. With Rooney gone and Ibra completely stuck in injury hell, Mourinho wanted above all to make a statement by signing a world-class forward, but when he went for Neymar, well, saying PSG outbid him is an understatement. Then he got super close signing Griezmann, but Atletico were hit with a transfer ban, and the Frenchman ended up shutting down any talks as he was too scared the fans would turn on him if he left the club hanging like that. And between that and the board's strange dealings, United ended up instead signing Lukaku from Everton for 75 million pounds, and I mean, he was young, already familiar with Mourinho from his time back at Chelsea, had been shortlisted for PFA Player of the Year and had nearly taken the golden boot while at Everton, so it made sense, but compared to Neymar or Griezmann, well, what can I even say? <laughs> Add to this the purchase of Matic, a great player Mourinho has repeatedly relied on throughout his career, as well as the sale of a single player, Yanuzai, and once again, you got the feeling that Mourinho had been uncharacteristically inactive in the transfer market. Where was the manager known for arriving and cleaning up the house in one sweep? Something was off and everyone's eyes looked in one direction, the board and the owners. 
Regardless, as the season started, United shocked everyone, going 12 matches undefeated, scoring 4 goals or more in half of those matches, but somehow, they were still 2 points below Man City and to make matters worse, they lost the following match against Othersfield Town out of all teams. Then, following another bad moment against Chelsea 2 weeks later, despite being hit with an injury crisis, they still managed to go on a streak of 13 matches where they only lost against Man City, but again, despite only 3 defeats in their first 24 matches, City had somehow managed to go 12 points in front with a damn near perfect record. And still, somehow, Mourinho was the most criticized manager in the league, leading him to complain about not being able to compete with Man City's budget, saying they bought fullbacks for the price of strikers. And I mean, just take a look at their starting 11s when they faced each other. Except for Ederson and Delph, City had superior players in every single position, so when January arrived, it was time to try to somehow salvage the season, and that's when the opportunity presented itself. Ibra left for LA Galaxy, Arsenal showed interest in Mkhitaryan, and meanwhile, Alexi Sanchez, who had hit 48 goal contributions in 4200 minutes just 6 months earlier, was now undervalued after repeatedly insisting that he wanted to leave the club. So, in in the most convenient of manners, the two clubs simply traded players, and the only downside of the deal, Alexi Sanchez became the most well-paid player in the country, receiving half a million pounds a week. Had he just effortlessly gone back to playing like he used to as seemingly everyone predicted he would, this would have been fine, but instead, he would score only 5 goals for United over the next 2 years, setting his cost at around 10 million per goal. It was easily one of the worst transfers in history. In fact, Sanchez never fit Mourinho's style, a lot of the fans still question to this day if Mourinho even approved of his signing, as he constantly mentioned that it was his will to sign Perisic over him, and so, all Sanchez brought was more instability, more chaos, more doubt, and even managed to disrupt the progression of golden boy Anthony Martial along the way. And with one thing added to the other, over the next half of the season, everything began derailing. After defending him tirelessly, in January Mourinho finally gave in to the criticism of Pogba, subbing him off against Tottenham and having a public fight right there on the sidelines, eventually leading club legends like Paul Scholes to make things worse by publicly slating Pogba and other elements of the team, leading to a clear dip in the team's spirits. Eventually culminating in 4 more defeats over the final 13 matches of the season, finishing 2nd place, 19 points below City. But look, City finished the league with a record-breaking 100 points. There was no stopping them, and still, in a season with such strong opposition, Mourinho managed to get United to 81 points. 81! The same amount Leicester had when they won the league 2 years earlier, and 11 more points than any other manager since Fergie. In fact, Mourinho had managed more points per game than Ferguson had managed in 6 out of his 13 title-winning seasons in the Premier League era. As he would say one year later, I think finishing second with Man United was one of the biggest achievements of my career. You'll say I'm crazy, but that's because people don't know what happened behind the scenes. And well, I'll just say this, I certainly don't think Mourinho is as crazy as the media tried to make him out to be. Still, with an early exit in the Champions League and a defeat to Chelsea in the FA Cup final, Mourinho now lacked the one thing that made him invulnerable to criticism, silverware. And so, everything crumbled. To start, Rui Faria, who had been Mourinho's assistant manager for 15 years, finally got tired of all this mess and left the club, which was especially problematic as he had often been credited with keeping the locker room in check after Mourinho's outbursts, often calming things down between Pogba and Mourinho. So once he left, well, Pogba won the World Cup, leading Mourinho to give him a backhanded compliment saying that the World Cup is the perfect place for him because it's a full month with no distractions. Then he made his discontent to the poor public once again, claiming he gave them a list of 5 players and they couldn't get him a single one of them. After the opening match arrived, Pogba came out saying, you can't give your best if you're not happy, which Mourinho felt was directed at him, leading him to tell Pogba to ask for a transfer if he wants to leave so badly. And after a month mostly known for another press conference freakout by Mourinho where he stood up from his seat demanding respect, reminding everyone that he had won 3 Premier League titles more than all the other managers in the league put together, Pogba decided to come out criticizing his tactics after a draw against Wolves, saying that great teams need to attack, 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 leading Mourinho to pretty much put him in his place, literally telling him, you're a good player, not a special player, and then stripping him off the captain's armband and sending the drama into complete over 
overdrive, with Mourinho going nuts, first with the two being recorded as they got into a confrontation in training, then with Mourinho swearing into a TV camera after beating Newcastle, and finally chasing Chelsea's assistant coach down the tunnel, eventually ending it all by describing Pogba as a virus in front of the entire squad, saying, you pass your virus to the others, you don't play, you don't respect the other players or the supporters, and you kill the mentality of good, honest people around you. Completely burning any bridges left between them, leading Pogba's agent Hayola to claim he demanded an extra £200,000 a week in order to stay at the club, before claiming that if these requests weren't met, Lukaku, another player represented by Hayola, would also leave. So, knowing United's board, guess what they did next? They fired Mourinho, and on the day of his sacking, Pogba made sure to post a picture on Instagram mocking Mourinho before deleting it shortly after. And as it all came to an end, many felt the need to point out one thing. Wasn't this the exact same thing that happened at Chelsea?